Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be unboxing, mounting, and testing the Noctua NH L9A-AM4. And this is the Chromax Black Edition. This compact cooler is designed for small form factor cases and low profile builds. And it comes with an AM4 mounting hardware for older AMD Ryzen CPUs. So let's open the box and see what's inside. So it comes in this small well-designed package. Inside the box, we can see the cooler itself, a user manual on the top. There are four screws here and a thermal paste, some badge, I suppose, a fan extension cable. This is the heatsink and fan itself, screws, and the AM4 backplate. So this will be my first time looking at the manual as well. So to test the cooler, I will be using the usual B550i Aorus Pro AX. And as for the CPU, I'll be using the Ryzen 7 5800X. If you are not familiar on how to install the CPU to the socket, just... I forgot the pins. I'm not going to break. Anyway, I'm not going to bend the pins. So there's the triangle here, which will correspond to the triangle here. Seems that the pins are not bent. As for installation, first we have to remove the stock retention module and backplate that use a screwdriver. Remove these two and also remove the backplate. So most low profile coolers will not use the existing backplate, which means that these coolers are also not compatible with AM5. I'm not sure if they can create an adapter for this. So it should be like this. Okay, then the included thermal paste is the Noctua NH1. Previously, I have the NH2. I'm not sure how much different is the NH1 with the NH2. It's probably good for two to three applications only. So usually for Ryzen, Noctua will recommend you to do it in this form. So a good amount in the center and then small amounts in the four corners. So the fan header is up here. Oh, it's tight. Okay, then install it like this. Okay, let me try that. So you have to put it here. Okay. Then you have to put it upside down. This is what I don't like in low profile coolers. You really have to do some acrobatics. For the back plate, you have to put it this way. They said that this is a non-conductive back plate. This is possibly conductive, possibly, I mean, we're not sure. There's a caution, please make sure that the insulated side of the back plate is facing the motherboard and the label is also here. So I'll just follow the same uh, diagram. I'm not sure what these screws are for, since you have the screws here. So I'll screw the bottom one first since I can see it clearly. You should perform three turns on each screw, then repeat until all are fully tightened. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Looks like it's... Looks good. As per Noctua's website, this cooler is not rated for 5800X overclocking, but it should still be able to provide a good cooling performance. So far, the winner for 5800X is the IS60 with a combination of D21 Pro case and 2X host fans. I haven't seen such good cooling performance. In okay, I'll just test it out first. Okay, as for the temps while benchmarking with Cinebench R23, it averaged at 90.23 degrees Celsius. While benchmarking FA15, it averaged at 75.71 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 86.4 degrees Celsius. The thermal result is very much comparable with ID Cooling IS60. And as for the noise, Noctua's NHL9A AM4 is the quietest low-profile cooler that I've tested. You can only hear the hums if you are 50 centimeters away from 
from the machine and this is very impressive and yet as expected for a Noctua cooler. In conclusion, the Noctua NHL9A AM4 is an okay CPU cooler for small form factor cases and low profile builds. It is easy to install since the included mounting kit is pre-installed and it has acceptable cooling performance while maintaining low noise levels. It is expensive at 2,700 pesos so an alternative is to buy an EXP90-X36 and mount a Noctua fan for comparable results. However, at this point, I don't want to recommend Thermal Rights EXP90 due to its protruding mount as can be seen in my previous SFF builds. And the overall total will be around 2,500 pesos making your savings to be at most 300 pesos. With that, I don't think XP90-X36 is worth it. And I think Noctua NHL9A AM4 is worth it. Okay, that's it for this video. You'd see this setup in my next SFF build. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!